ladies and gentlemen, in 1972, when a Conservative Prime Minister, two years into office, was faced with economic problems and overpowered units, we buckled and we gave up. The result was higher inflation, more strikes, and a three day week. A decade later, in 1981, when another Conservative Prime Minister and Conservative Chancellor, two years into office, were faced with economic problems and powerful unions, we did not give up. We pressed on again. Nothing but trophies. The judge must be very proud of them. I can't remember the last time I bought a pasty. I, I, I can't remember the last time I bought a pasty. I, I, I can't remember the last time I bought a pasty. So three years later, my message remains the same. We're not going to get through this as a country if we set one group against another, if we divide, denounce, and demonize. We need an effort from each and every one. One nation working hard together. We are still open. Jobs and investment that you know weakens the economy. Just to say you kick the rich. The people who pay the price for that are not the rich, but the poor looking for work, and there is nothing fair about that.
Like I just heard, and I can't even believe it, right? But I can. The Chancellor of the Exchequer, the heir to the Bouncy Taylor, George Osborne, the man who was destitute in this country, had just come out that he claimed for, on his expenses, a horse's paddock. A fucking. <laughs> a horse's paddock and a field. He claimed for that on his expenses. How the fuck has that got anything to do with him executing his fucking duties? as a Chancellor or a fucking MP. A horse's paddock. This is this man has got people on this, co co this country on its fucking knees. On its knees. He's destituting people. He's got the sick and the disabled out working for their benefits. He is, he, he is a fascist. He is a fucking pig at the trough of public money. He is a thief. He is a thief. He's stolen that money, £100,000 he claimed in interest payments on that house, and he sold it and made a million pounds. He has, he's a multi-millionaire, he has four million pounds. He's... Yes, we inherited a tax by some in the city who have lower rates. A circulating soup kitchen. But just as we should never advance so much. Aren't you gonna leave me alone? Can't you see I'm busy? So it's an economic delusion to think you can balance it only on the wallets of the rich. A lot of foreigners have opened shops in this area. Sorry, the market so is closed. There's no more produce. My message remains the same. Oh, I'm starving. Help me, for pity's sake. One group against another. We divide, denounce, and divide. We need an effort from each and every one. One nation working hard together. We are still all. Now, ladies and gentlemen, in 1972, when a Conservative Prime Minister, two years into office... Queue up, up like everyone else. They'll only hire the first union. one anyway. We buckled. We gave up. The result was higher inflation, more strikes, and a three-day week. A decade later, in 1981, when another Conservative Prime Minister and Conservative Chancellor two years into office, were faced with economic problems and powerful unions. We did not give up, but pressed on and overcame. The rich, the rich, the banking crisis, the banking crisis, looking for work the rich the rich the rich the rich poor looking for work the banking crisis the rich the rich the rich the rich Crisis. Banking crisis on the backs of the poor.